Have you figured out your niche? Are you helping adding value to other people's lives? Then you're in the right place. Welcome to Munira's Musings with your host, Munira Zahabi. Greetings from Chicago land. This is Munira. Welcome to another episode of Munira's Musings with a new guest, a new host. How are you, Titiana? Thank you so much for being on Munira's Musings. Thank you so much. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Munira. I'm so happy to be here and so excited to share my stories with you. And I heard lots of about your podcast and about your followers. So I cannot wait to connect with you. Oh, that's awesome. Thank you so much. Well, everybody, you know that Munira's Musings is a show where we showcase somebody who has a message, who has a niche, and who has transform their life to what they are doing today. So we wanna hear their journey. If you are one of those people, then you wanna connect with me and we are booking more dates in the next year. We booked up for this year. So thank you so much. And what we do here as the niche navigator is we help people find your niches. If you are in business or if you want to start a business, if you don't know where to start, how to start, why to start we help you figure all those things out so go ahead and send us a message and let's figure it out for you well without further ado tatiana tell us a little bit about yourself so you know i was born in slovakia and it was communist country and now I'm living in the United States. So they are really, you know, like we were growing up in communist country and oh my God, United States was evil, right? So we were, I was raised, I cannot complain. My child was her good, my parents were great. Everything was great. And then when I finished my college, I, my dean, the dean of the college, uh, sent me to United States to get more experience about fitness because the time in United in Slovakia, women didn't work out, didn't take care of the body. It was just professional athletes, but there were no gyms, there was no fitness, regular fitness, and that's what I got involved. I was obsessed with being able to change the body. But at the same time, I was very arrogant. I didn't believe in God, that's how we were raised. And I thought I can do everything on my own. And I look at the people who believe in God as you know, not that smart, not educated because I'm such a genius and I can figure out everything on my own, right? So, and I got to college that I wanted. I started my PhD. So everything was working the way I wanted. So of course, like I don't need God. And this was in back home? That was in Slovakia, yes. So then I came here from Slovakia. I was supposed to be here for five months. The person who's supposed to help me was the owner of the gym in Santa Monica. And you know, we exchanged that I will help him clean the gym, clean the house, cooking, while exchange he will teach me what's going, you know, in the fitness. So he invited me here, I came to his house, and after one month he just said, this is not working and then I need to go home. And I'm like, I'm not going home. I didn't learn anything yet. I help, but I didn't learn anything. And he just said, I asked him, like, do you know any other people who speaks my language? Because I don't speak English. Who can, I can help babysit and then learn on fitness. And he said, I came here, nobody helped me. I'm not helping anyone. Oh, and wow. then morning, um, um, next day morning, he left to the gym. And before he left, he said, Just leave, leave the keys under the mat when you leave. And that was it. I had to pack my stuff. I had no idea where I'm gonna go. I had hundred bucks in my pocket to survive. Didn't speak English, didn't know anyone. And that was like here, me genius who always look down on God, right? I had to go on my knees crying and begging for help. I didn't know how to pray. And, but 
and didn't know who else to ask. Really, only person, quote unquote, I knew was God. So I said, I really need help. I pack my stuff. I carry my two luggage, right? The old fashioned, not the rolling. <laughs> and uh -huh. I, okay. <laughs> Right? Yeah, I've had walk. those before. Yes. yes. <laughs> so I walked to Third Street Promenade. That was the only place I knew that was maybe 10 blocks walking down. And, you know, it was morning, the store started opening. So I walk in one store just to, you know, spend some time. And the person started, he was from Egypt, the owner. And he asked me, you know, what's the luggage? Where are you going? And with broken English, I explain what's happening. And he says, if you want the work, you can start working right here. Put the luggage in the corner, here is the duster and start dusting. So I had a job, like, oh my gosh, I have the job, right? And then lunchtime, he says, why don't you go for a walk? because you are stressed, have a break. I walk on the street thinking where I'm gonna sleep tonight, where I'm gonna sleep tonight. Woman talks to her mom. I see the woman talking to her daughter, little girl in my language. In 27 years, I have never met on the street people speaking my language because there are not that many here in Los Angeles. I came, I explained what, what's going on, she called her friend, like, come here, check, you know, there is some woman, I'm not sure if she is real, <laughs> come check her out. So I talk again to her, I explain, and she said, well, if you need a place, you can stay with me. She lived six blocks from the Third Street Promenade. I find a job, I find a place in one day, and I start working there, and I had a place, we became roommates for two years. Oh, wow. One month later, when I was working in the store, the owner introduced me, gives me the book, Return to Love from Miriam Williamson. Before, I would never ever touch the book with God, right? Like that was, you know, below me. I, that was my first English book. That was my first God book. I was reading the book like a sponge. The lines and the words and everything, it was like my soul, my body was craving for it so much. Some pages I already, like it's new, I knew what I'm going to read. It was so deja vu. I knew what she's describing in heaven. I knew what she talks about God. And some pages I was just crying and crying with joy coming home. And I didn't understand why I'm crying. I didn't understand the cry because I cry when I was hurting, pain, or somebody died, right? That's what you cry in communism. You don't cry for, for joy or bliss. You never know bliss. And that's when I recognize it. And I was, I had goosebumps and that's where I open up. And that's my journey, finding God and connecting to higher source came to me. And probably that's why I had to come here. Then I become personal trainer. I had a client and they all, what I learned, they all jump in. Yes, I'm dedicated. I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this. I'm like, and I said, you have to slow down. You have to understand everything in our lives. It's like a tree. When you jump right away into the trunk, right, without the roots, the bigger trunk, the first storm comes and the trunk, the tree is gone. It blows you away. Yes. What you focus when you start working out, forget the body. Or it's not even working out. Anything in your life, starting the business or creating, starting academic education, you have to have first root. Okay. And the bigger the root, the stronger the tree. True, true. Yes. And the, from the trunk, what comes? The crown. What is in the crown? It's the fruit. What is the fruit? Fruit is our relationship, our job, our abundance, our wealth, and the trunk is the body. 
So you need to start from the roots. The deeper, the better. Then you go with the healthy body. And then you go to your fruits and the crown. If you skip the body, ignore the body, the health, the shape, the crown will never be there or never, never be the fruitful as so you cannot ignore, okay, forget the body. Okay, I'm ignoring. I, I don't care anymore. I don't want anybody telling me how I like. It's just reality. You have to be happy with your body. To you know, it. What you're saying right now, it makes a lot of sense because we haven't, I don't know if everybody else has, but I haven't heard it put it that way. So when did all of this come into light for you? So it came... It was coming drip, 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 right? It first it came with my clients. It you cannot the diet don't work. The okay. diet, right? You have to come because what is the diet? Diet is in your mind. You are like you are with the trainer with your tr diet. Okay, so that's maybe one two hours a day. But what's the rest of hours? Then twenty two hours is what? It's your mind. It's you. And how do you do that? If it's the way they do that, you have to go for the roots. What I learned, if we have outside motivation, motivation to get fit into the dress, fit into the reunion party, or study for somebody else, that's gone without the roots. When you grow the roots, you understand? So when you grow the roots, you go deeper. And this deep, you grow the roots deeper, deeper to the soil. To the, the deeper you go, the richer the soil. Once it hits your wharf, once the roots hit the wharf, and you start the juice from your wharf, creating this streamline shooting up to the, through your body, and through the crown of the tree, that you gain lifelong motivation. So when you see who you are, how you were created as a masterpiece, when you see the masterpiece, you will never ever insult it, hurt it, or let anyone else let it hurt. That means you will never you will have the desire from inside not to eat the junk food because that hurts your masterpiece. You will rather pick from inside, let's say, chip or apple. It's not about the calories. It has nothing because every once in a while when you have chips, they don't re it, it's not bad for you. The problem on the regular basis, am I growing roots or am I not growing roots? I eat this apple. And that's, man, they are going to shoot my roots right to my wharf. Okay. Then a little later, you eat something again healthy or decide for walk. Like, oh, wow, after work, that's going to shoot my roots all the way down. So it's basically you are making the decision minute by minute. Okay. You understand? So now you've become a fitness trainer and you teach women to look at their body as a temple. And you want each woman to grow their roots. Am I correct? Yes. Okay. So why personal trainer? Why, why was that your calling? It, I don't know. I was in my life in, the, in high school. I wanted to be, since fifth grade, I want to be math and physical education teacher. I love the numbers and love physical education. So fitness. So I became, my profession is master degree in education, in fitness and biology, because they didn't open math education that time. So I had to pick biology. So I become fitness instructor for 20 years. I had some celebrities, I had just regular women, you know, so I, I was really busy. And, but this is what I learned if, and those clients, mostly my clients, it didn't come and go kinema. When I got my clients, they stay for me, with me forever until I finish my fitness and become mom. 
because I was teaching not just the exercise. It's no secret in the exercise. There are no secret. There is no secret in this, the, nothing. The secret is growing the roots. That's the bottom line. Okay, so what makes you stand out from different physical fitness professionals? So then I become mom. And again, you need motivation as a mom. How do you get motivated when you are circle? My life was, right, just baking, uh, taking care of my children, taking, you know, sports and school. I help in PTA and schools every day. And then that was my life. But then I realized the women to be, it's, it's much bigger scale than just fitness. We are like women are in marriage, women are in life with the, with the careers. And we, we know that our boat is heading wrong direction, wrong port, right? Imagine I'm on the boat and the boat might say, do I want to be there where I'm heading in five years? Do I want to be there? And we say no, and we still keep going because we are afraid of the change. We are afraid to shift the boat. And sometimes we wait so long that somebody else comes and flip the boat upside down. I see, okay. So what I'm saying, if you would see your wharf, the wharf that I'm talking about creating your body, now it comes to your real life. If you see your wharf, you speak up. It's like mother, let's say you have your child. When somebody does something bad to your child, you don't wait one week, two weeks, this thinking, should I stand up for my child? Should I? You go like bare mama in a minute and say, you do not disrespect my child. Why we don't do it as a woman? Okay. Because we don't you see the world. Point. No, you have a good point as to, but then there's other women you know, body, body image is nothing on their life. There are women out in different parts of the world where body image is just outside because they are still trying to find their self-respect. Yes. So how do you help those women? So what I tell them, it's them, I created my business. It's called My Return. All this information was coming from my higher source. I was on the run. And I was thinking, and it was, the voice was saying, when you are on that boat and heading wrong direction, what is it saying? You are heading wrong direction from the masterpiece you were created. The bad feelings that we are getting, the further we are going from that we were created, that is telling us you are going away. So I created my business. It's called My Return. When you shift the boat, and go back the direction that you were created. So I created the apparel for women that has like CEO of my own life, right? What is a bigger power than being in charge every aspect of your life? Fitness, academy, family, relationship of everything, but that comes from inside. So the, uh, I created this apparel sweatshirts, you know, so when you wake up in the morning, you take shower or have a coffee and you go for a walk and you put on t-shirt. For example, I have playing small doesn't fit me or I have t-shirt, I love me. All these quotes came through me from higher source telling me who I am. You have lots of t-shirt on Etsy and Amazon that it's saying, be kind, be that, be that. It's telling to the other person what needs to do so I am happy. We have to take charge and be little honest with ourselves. Sometimes we are the one sabotaging and not taking responsibility our happiness. Not take charge or sabotage other people holding them. You need to behave like this. You have to do this until I am happy. Eventually, it's, so it comes also, it's all about growing the roots. No one else is going to grow the roots until we do it for women. No, I appreciate that. That's really, 
amazing that you have come you've come a long way you've come a long way from the guy throwing you out of his house and i don't mean literally but you know what i yes. mean is it the fact that now you're still in los angeles right in yes mm -hmm. and what is the one thing that you want to tell women today so this might sound a little weird but this is what happened to me Oh, before on Easter, I went for run. I that's my best way to connect to a higher source. And on the run, it says the voice you have to watch Passion from Mel Gibson, Crucifixion Jesus. And I'm like, okay, I do it. Like, so I was busy all day and I turned the TV on. I watched by myself, I watched the movie, like I was told I was moving. And there was a part when mom mother when she saw jesus how he carried his cross and it was on the whole screen mother's pain the mother's pain for her son and i just started crying i was bawling i was crying so hard and i felt the pain of every woman in the world who goes through when she's in the marriage with the abusive husband, with alcoholic. And I saw her, saw them all sitting at home, so scared when man comes. And is, she, is he gonna kick me out? Is he gonna hurt me? Do I need to pack it? I saw the pain women for their children, everything. I cried for 15 minutes and it was saying, you need to feel deep pain so you understand women, helping women to find their worth. That's the most important. You find your worth, like I said, you won't let anyone abuse you or treat you badly. You won't treat your body badly. And you will teach your children to find the worth. This is for my daughter also. I don't want her, you know, she's 17 years old and these girls, they all want to please boyfriend and will do anything for boyfriend. My number one is find your education, be financially independent and start a relationship. Because I do believe women stay in the relationship or marriage because they are financially insecure. I guarantee you, if you give women, here is the money, would you leave? She would be gone, right? Yes. So how do people find you? So, you know, I'm on Facebook, Tatiana Schlossman. I have my Instagram. Or just Google me, Google my store. It's called myreturn.life my return dot life my return dot life so let me explain also the how this name came it's called my return right it returned to who you meant to be and then i was working on the logo how she should be and again the message came so if you look up the logo m and y it's capital and the return it's cursive when we go off our masterpiece, the cursive things, we please, we do other things. We are very flexible, we are like, okay, we please people. But when you return, MY is capital, solid, you trusting yourself and knowing myself. Y, MY, the Y is there as a symbol with the heart on top. Why is when you are crossing from a life where you are attached to the things, like to your food or to the person or to certain situation, and there is other island with God. To cross to God on the bridge, you have to leave all the luggage, all the package on this island where you live to, in order to cross to God. So when you are crossing on the bridge, you cannot hold to anything. You cannot even carry like tiny little candy for support, Not nothing. You cannot be addicted or depend on anything. So when you are crossing, it's crossing like why? That's the logo of my, you are absolutely, absolutely free 
and that's the only way you can cross to the God and okay. you see God, right? Okay. We always see, read it, you cannot put anything between you and God. But sometimes we put the food, sometimes we put the person, sometimes we put something between us, we carry something, we cannot cross that bridge victorious. No, thank you so much for explaining that. I appreciate it. And you know what? I'm, you you have a wonderful story and thank you so much uh, for sharing that. And I know that women are going to look for you and let's see what happens because you are empowering women in your own way and you're taking them from the roots upwards and it's amazing, right? It's very, very amazing. I thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, you have it all here right now. If you are ready to take the next step and to find yourself worth, then go ahead and connect with Tatiana. She is on myreturn.life. And go ahead and let's just have a conversation and see where we take, where we take ourselves to because we women need to put our roots down and need to be the CEO of our lives, right? Thank you so much. And if you like this show, please go ahead, like, share, and subscribe. Until we meet again next week, thank you so much. Thank have you for listening day. to this episode of Munira's Musings with your host, Munira Zahabi. If you enjoyed our show, please share and subscribe to this channel. And for more content, please join our Facebook group.